Well, welcome again to the Thinking About Creation video series. This is part three on intelligent design where we cover irreducible complexity. This video will only cover the basics of irreducible complexity, um, its definition and what it means. We will discuss, cover its application to origins and biology in the next video. Basically, it's difficult to integrate ideas about design with ideas about science. They're really on other opposite ends of the spectrum. Science deals with events that are predictable, while as design deals with creativity, which really isn't un really is unpredictable. If creativity were predictable, it wouldn't be creativity. So some important questions to keep in mind when going through the series are what are the hallmarks of things that are produced by creative minds versus things that are produced by nature? Um, are there any systems or components which require creativity? And could one empirically determine whether a given system or component required creativity? Well, let's tackle the first question. What are the hallmarks of, creative, of uh, items that are produced by creativity? Well, one of, one of the main ones is holism. Holism is the ability to think of a system as a as a whole collection of parts rather than as the individual parts themselves. That is, you can design an end product um, and build it from beginning to end with the end in mind. The intermediate stages don't need to be functional. They only need to contribute toward the final design. And they contribute to this final design not by uh, necessity, that is, they don't lead... Um, via physical causes to the end product, they lead to the end product by design. They are stages of design. And then a designer, as he's building it, can match a part closely with a part that he has not yet put into the system based on its design. Michael Behe um, attempted to make an empirical definition of holism, that is to bridge the gap between our intuitive concept of um, design and what can be tested and in doing so he came up with irreducible complexity and an irreducibly complex system is a sy single system which is composed of several well-matched interacting parts that contribute to the system's basic function and where the removal of any one of these parts causes the system to effectively cease functioning so we have a single system with a core function you have multiple interacting parts Parts, the parts are well matched to each other, and the removal of any part of the core renders the whole machine functionless. So here's some clarifications. This does not evolve what, whether or not a uh, system is evolvable or not. That's a second idea, which we'll cover in the uh, next video. It also allows for additional or redundant components which can be removed. That is, irreducible complexity only means that there is a core that has a basic function where the removal of a part removes the function of the whole system. It does not mean that there aren't additional parts attached. It also allows for the components themselves to have uses in other systems um, and even be entire subsystems that can be reused. Here's an example, a Corvette. It's definitely designed. There's lots of parts and not all of them are necessary. However, Although not all of the car is irreducibly complex, um, for example, if the bumper falls off, the car doesn't stop running, uh, there are several irreducibly complex cores, one of which being, for example, the drive shaft. Now, many of the parts on the drive shaft are useful in other areas. For example, the wheels can be used individually for oh, a variety of things. But the drive shaft itself, as the basic function of moving the car along, um, if any of its major parts are removed, the whole thing ceases to function. Now, most drive shafts have extra parts which can be removed uh, that kind of uh, that improve the function of the basic system. But there is a basic core where the removal of any part will uh, remove this, the functioning of the whole system. So here, here's the example Michael Behe used. And that's a mouse trap has five parts, and all of them are necessary for contributing to the basic function. That is, if you remove any given part, the whole thing will cease to function. That does not mean that a mousetrap couldn't be designed with fewer parts. For example, 
you have these two mouse traps. These were designed as a refutation of Behe's proposal. However, they only show that other irreducibly complex mouse traps could be designed. That is, these mouse traps were not made by removing a part from an irreducibly complex machine. They were made by remanufacturing parts and essentially creating new parts and new irreducibly complex machines. So here's Behe's definition again. It's a single system which is composed of several well-matched interacting parts that contribute to the basic function and where the removal of any one of the parts causes the system to effectively cease functioning. Okay, so why is this evidence of design? It's because designers can see ahead, designers can build multi-part systems that require looking ahead to the finish while it's in progress, designers can make multiple changes that require looking ahead, um, for example, if you've ever done remodeling on your house, you know that the um, while it is in construction, uh, it is not currently functional, and designers can engineer systems to make such changes automatically. And we'll cover this in the next video. Now, there's several, the, uh, the two main strengths of Behe's argument is, first of all, that it's empirically testable. That is, you can try removing parts, and if if you can remove a part from a system and it still retains its basic function, it's not irreducibly complex. Or if you remove, or if removing any of the parts uh, loses its basic function, then it is re irreducibly complex. Um, it's also characteristic of how designers work when they when they work creatively. Creatively. However, one issue is that um, it is not. Uh, for sure, that a non-design that a natural system um, could cannot produce irreducibly complex systems. That is, even though it's a hallmark of creatively designed systems, that doesn't mean that that's the only way they they might be able to come about. Um, irreducible complexity is also an all-or-nothing measure. That is, um, it's either irreducibly complex or not. Um, there, with this definition, there are no gradations. Um, there's also several parts of the definition uh, which are not empirical, which is well-matched, and what the basic function is. This can be uh, argued about, and there's no definite way to determine this. Um, however, irreducible complexity has contributed uh, to intelligent design in several interesting ways. First of all, irreducible complexity is a good example of a, an attempt to make a, an intuitive idea holism in this case, into an empirical one, that is bridging the gap between a design idea and moving it into the area of science. Irreducible complexity is neither faulty nor faultless. It's got several strengths and several weaknesses. Irreducible complexity will probably need clarification and updating to make it more useful um, in the future for scientific endeavors. Next time, we'll talk about how it relates to evolution.